Welcome to another team lineup for the Tiny Tony, brought to you by the Fedora Wearing Rushy Ram. Today, we're looking at probably some of the most powerful and popular Pokemon for the Tony, some of whom may end up used by many a teams for the competitions. Today, I bring you the Powerhouse Team. So with the Powerhouse team, we're going to be taking a, a look at some of the more powerful Pokemon that are allowed in the Tiny Tourney. In fact, some of these Pokemon will be probably the most commonly seen within the Tiny Tourney. But I'm going to take a look at each one of them and talk to you why they're probably going to be in this lineup. And what makes them so, so very dangerous in this competition. So the first one we're going to look at was, is... A very common one that's probably going to be on pretty much all of the top teams. It's probably going to be Kartana. And the reason why Kartana is going to be on this list is because, as I said in the previous video, Kartana is the only Ultra Beast allowed in the, t in the Tiny Tourney. Simply because it's the only one small enough to actually qualify for the Tiny Tourney. And what Kartana offers is one of the highest attack stats, even higher than Pheromosa's, with probably one of the fastest speed stats allowed within the Tiny Tourney without any kind of help, as well as a very good defensive stat, and a really powerful ability in Beast Boost. So for those who don't know, Beast Boost increases the highest stat for the Pokemon that with that ability if it knocks out a Pokemon. And since Kartana's highest stat is its attack stat, it's going to have the Beast Boost increase that attack stat. So if it gets the first knockout when it comes to, you know, if it gets that first knockout, it's going to just snowball out of control. So people are probably going to run Kartana, Adamant Nature, Jala Nature, one of those two. And they're probably going to run the Sacred Sword, you know, the Sacred Sword, Leaf Blade, X Scissor combo. They may run they may run Detect or even Psycho Cut, depending on what type of Kartana they're going to run. So that's probably going to be the first member people might want to add for their rosters for the pure for the powerhouse combo or powerhouse team that's the, that is this team. So the next Pokemon is going to be Marowak. Now there are two kinds of Marowaks. Both of them are allowed in the Tiny Tourney because they both fall under the you know, less, a, mi a meter or less than qualification. Both Alolan and regular Marowak both have the same kind of attack stats. They both have a similar stat. The only, and they even have Lightning Rod as an ability. But the difference is that one has Rockhead as an ability and the other one has Rockhead as normal ability, while one has Cursed Body and the other one has Battle Armor. So this is really going to be a, ch a difference maker between, you know, which which Marowak people want to use and whether or not they want to take that lightning rock. With Galvantula allowed in the tournament, it's going to be probably a very popular one as well. So a, lo so a Lowland Marowak or a regular Marowak with lightning rod could actually be the key difference for helping, helping some of our Pokemon and steer away those electric, electric attacks. So you're probably gonna have Pokemon if it's the Alolan Marowak, you're gonna have the thick you're gonna have the bone you're gonna have bone club or thick club, whatever that is. And flare blitz depending on which one it's going to be. They it can also run a few other moves as well. I mean it's I mean it doesn't really show it here. Oh, there we go. So it can have like flame wheel if it wants to. Not really flame wheel, but it could have like flare blitz. It could have stomping tantrum. I don't know why you'd run that, but that's one move. It can also run thrash, a really strong normal type attack. And with how few ghosts there are, thrash could be, could find some really good value. It can also run retaliate if it wants to, and maybe bone rush or something, or even bone club. So that's what. So that's my next uh, offer for this team lineup. So the third, the, so the next team member I'm going to be looking at is Porygon 2. This is also a very popular, very powerful Pokemon, especially in the VGC. So with the Eviolite item, Porygon 2 is probably one of the strongest users of the Eviolite item. 
for those who don't know, Evil Light increases the defenses, the defensive stats of the user if it's if it's held by a not fully evolved Pokemon. So in this case, Porygon 2 has a defense and special defense of 90 and 95 respectfully. So even without, you know, EV, IV increases, uh, that brings their totals up to 130, no, 140 and 145 perhaps respectfully. Not, might want to check the math on that, but that's probably that. And it is a really good user of Trick Room. Porygon 2 can ma really make use of the Trick Room move, set it at, setting it up the field for our really slow Pokemon. And it can also use moves like Discharge and Zap Cannon or so if it wants to. It can even go for it can even go for moves like Tri Attack for some for some stab damage. It has access to a wide variety of TMs such as Shadow Ball, Psy Shock. I believe it knows us. Uh, it believe it knows psychic no it, yes it does know psychic it also has access to moves such as rest to make it really hard to kill you know if it wants to if it gets like say paralyzed poisoned or whatever it can just rest it off and just tank tank the damage while it recovers and then and it even knows the move recover so that's another move it even has access to ice beam blizzard and so on it's just a really powerful pokemon and i would be surprised if not a lot of people run this pokemon so our next Pokemon is probably going to be one of the strongest ghost types as well allowed in the competition. We've got Mimikyu. Now, Mimikyu is a very interesting Pokemon thanks to its ability, which is Disguise. So, what it does is basically it just has a free substitute from the moment it hits the field. It's immune to normal type attack, so fake outs can't, st can't hurt it. It's, it can't be flinched by su by such a fake out move to get the su to get rid of the substitute. So if it, if it had a substitute, but Mimikyu gets like the first turn to just set up however it wants. It can go for silly shenanigans such as Sword Dance into Play Rough or something, or even Shadow Claw and then Shadow Sneak. It can also make use of moves such as Trick Room as well. It can even set up a substitute if it's fast enough. To protect itself and its uh, and its second disguise, so it can get as many swords dances as possible, and it has access to a really powerful set of moves such as faint attack to ensure it can't be it miss can't miss its target. It has wood hammer for those water types we may run into. It has hone claws. It has play rough. It's just a really strong Pokemon. It even has ac access to moves such as work up and bulk up. So that's, so that's Mimikyu, another popular, really dangerous Pokemon. Which brings us into probably one of the strongest defensive tanks, aside from perhaps Porygon 2, but even surpassing Porygon 2 in Toxapex. So Toxapex is a very defensive Pokemon. It's very tanky. It's not gonna, you're not gonna see Toxapex outspeeding a lot of opponents, unless they're even slower than it. But Toxapex has the, has the ability Merciless. So Merciless, if it wants to, if it poisons a Pokemon, it will always crit against Pokemon that are poisoned. So, or I believe it's inc it increases the attack of, yeah, I believe it, I think it increases the attack of, yeah, yeah, the attacker, yeah, po if the target is poisoned, all of its attacks will become crits. So that is a really powerful move. And what it wants to do if it wants to go for that sort of playstyle it can go for it can set up toxic spikes and it can go for like say moves such as venom drench which double which increase in damage if the opponent is no i believe it's venoshock yeah venoshock doubles the moves power if the opponent is poison add on to that the critical hit per chance and guarantee if it's merciless and the po and the opponent is poison that is a very powerful combination it also has access to scald the frost breast if it wants to do that infestation just basically moves that really force the opponent and keeps them from getting away keeps them from switching out keeps them from you know just not having any kind of fun for example and it has access to the move painful bunker so for any non-steel type pokemon that physically attack uh tox effects they will be guaranteed to poison as well as protect suck uh, Toxapex from all damage, so that's a very, this is a very dangerous Pokemon you want, and it also has access to the ability Regenerator, 
which means it can swap back it can if it takes damage it can just pull you can just swap it out and then swap it back in to get some health back so so life so it can go for a leftovers regenerator combo it's a really dangerous pokemon and i'll be surprised if not a lot of people use it so the next pokemon another really defensive tank pokemon is going to be going to be uh whatchamacallit i i actually can't believe i forget it the name even though it's right there ferrothorn i am i there are so many pokemon i have forgotten the names of so many of them so in any case ferrothorn like toxapex is a very slow pokemon you're not gonna see it running around you're not gonna see it out speeding unless it's in a trick room and this is pretty much a team geared towards trick room but can operate out of trick room if it has to so Ferrothorn is a very dangerous Pokemon in that it, ha is, it has two things going for it. First, it's Grass nature and it's, and it's Steel type nature. The second thing is it's massive defensive buffs. So the typing it has means it only has two real weaknesses, Fighting and Fire types. If the opponent is not running any either of those two, two types, then Ferrothorn gets to pretty much do whatever it wants. It, it takes less damage from normal types, water types, electric types. It takes even less from grass types, psychic types, rock types, dragon types, steel types, and fairy types. It takes very little damage and it can just set up and do whatever it wants. So, so Ferrothorn has access to Curse, which can, you know, make it slower. Again, it doesn't really care about speed. It just wants to get, get buffed. It wants to get stronger with defensives and attack buffs. It has access to Metal Claw if it wants to increase its attack by dam or increase its attack by damaging the opponent and has a chance to increase its attack. It can go for Gyro Ball if it wants to, you know, make use of that slow speed high attack power. It even has access to moves such as Mirror Shot and Defense Iron Defense to increase its if, to increase its defensive capabilities and deal a lot of damage as well. Not really Mirror Shot. It also has access to the move Self-Destruct to deal massive bursts of damage if it wants to, if it has no other choice, or even even the move Explosion. It also has access to Iron Head and Ingrain to just really make it hard to knock out. And finally, it has Power Whip for, you know, stab damage for its grass type nature, just for massive bursts of damage. It also can learn egg moves such as spikes and stealth rocks as well as leech seed just basically forcing the opponent to waste ton tons of time and tons of attacks just dealing with a single ferrothorn so those are probably going to be some of the most dangerous pokemon once again i'm going to go through them one at a time gonna be, we have kartana you know a really fast heavy hitting pokemon kartana can do a whole lot of craziness it's probably going to be one of the most popular if not the most popular pokemon on teams then we have alolan marowak again very dangerous with that bone club if it gets if it's equipped with a bone club to which doubles its attack stat we have porygon 2 probably the strongest eviolite pokemon ever created ever conceived in the game it just it just does a whole lot of damage and it can just tank a lot of damage as well as just shrug it off and do whatever it wants. Mimikyu with the ability to have access to the free substitute on turn to set up and deal massive damage the following turn if it wants to do that. Toxapex for just merciless brutality damage, poisoning the opponent, forcing them to basically slowly whittle away their their health while recovering, regenerating, poisoning, doing tons of damage. That's what Toxabite wants to do. And finally, Ferrothorn, just to round out the team with pure tanking power and pure offensive attacking power, or even just stalling and draining the opponent of their life and sanity. Oh my goodness, these te this team, this powerhouse team that I have shown you, I'll be very impressed if if not one of these Pokemon makes it to the to the top 10 even, or even the top 30. I'll be impressed if only one of them or even two. You know what? I won't be impressed. I will not be surprised if all six of them make it to the top th to the top 30 of this competition. So I hope you guys enjoy this team lineup. If you want to make use of the powerhouse team, now you have just a few ideas of what you want to what you can run with if you want to run them. 
I will see you tacticians next time for the tiny for tiny tiny lineups. Till then, I'm Imperator Davius, your Fedora Rushy Ram. I'll see you all around. Bye bye.